Hi everyone, Phil Morera here today with the law firm Valent Legal and we're here today to talk about some common questions that we get about what you should do if you're involved in a slip and fall accident. This topic is important because slip and falls are relatively common in Nova Scotia and in the Atlantic provinces. Of course we live in an area of the world with inclement weather and these slip and fall cases though unfortunate can happen really anywhere anytime so knowing what to do after a slip and fall might happen is very important. Feel free to leave any questions you might have down below and we'll be sure to answer them. For more information about slip and fall accidents and other types of accidents, feel free to visit us at www.valentlegal.ca or follow us on Instagram. Okay, so now let's discuss your legal rights as it relates to slip and fall accidents. So number one, to cover the basics, what is a slip and fall claim, or I suppose also a trip and fall claim? A slip and fall claim can arise if and when you slip on someone's premises, basically. And a premises is defined very broadly in Nova Scotia under the law. It can be defined as really any land, structure, ship, vessel. It pretty much runs the gamut. There's some exceptions as it relates to portable structures, but by and large, most lands and structures are premises as defined by Nova Scotia law. A slip and fall case or a trip and fall case is often sometimes known as what's called an occupier's liability case. So an occupier is someone who is either in the physical possession of a premises or who has primary control or responsibility for what happens on those premises. Common causes of slip and fall accidents can range from ice on the sidewalk, slippery surfaces in the mall, you know, raised or cracked sidewalks, raised or cracks in parking lots, potholes, accumulated water in restaurants, or other types of premises like that. It can happen indoors, outdoors, it again really runs the, runs the gamut. Some of the more common injuries that we see that relate to slip and fall or trip and fall cases can be what are called orthopedic injuries, a broken bone, uh, there can be soft tissue injuries, whether it's swelling of the muscles, joints, tendons, things like that. Oftentimes people suffer concussions and slip and fall accidents given the mechanics of how someone might fall and given that they may in fact hit their head in the course of a slip and fall. Again, if there can be all different types of, of injuries, physical, emotional, psychological injuries that, that we we typically see arising out of slip and fall accidents. So a common question that we receive is, can I bring a claim after a slip and fall accident and who can I bring a claim against after a slip and fall accident or trip and fall accident? Long story short, if you slipped and fell or tripped and fell on any kind of premises where an occupier theoretically has possession or control of those premises, you can bring a claim. You can bring a claim if you fall at work, ostensibly. You can bring a claim if you fall on the sidewalk. If you slip on a slippery substance in a grocery store, a shopping center, if you slip and fall or trip and fall due to hazardous conditions at a private residence, you can bring a claim in, in every and all of these instances. If you slip and fall at work, you would theoretically have the same rights and obligations in relation to bringing a slip and fall claim as you would if you were in a premises that wasn't your work. There can be some complicating factors if there's any sort of workers' compensation regime in place with your employment, but if there's not, then generally speaking, you should be able to bring a slip and fall claim in the event that you do slip or trip and fall at your work. So if you do suffer a slip and fall or trip and fall incident, it's important to make yourself aware of where exactly it is that the fall took place. There can be a number of different people involved as to who you would be bringing your claim against. If you slipped and fell at a building, for instance, you would theoretically have a claim against the building owner. You might have a claim against the building's tenant. You might have a claim against the property management company, the janitorial service provider, the snow removal provider, on and on it goes. Whoever, again, is in physical possession of that premises or in large part has any sort of control or responsibility about what happens happens on those premises, you theoretically would have a claim against any and all of those people. So basically you've fallen and you might be curious as to what steps to take next. First and foremost, as with any situation where someone is injured, you'll want to check yourself over for injuries and if you do get the sense that you have suffered an injury, it's important to seek out medical attention as soon as you possibly can. If it's safe to do so, what you might also do is, is take account of your surroundings, where you are, exactly where it is that the fall might have taken place who, if anyone, might have observed the fall, collect their information if it's safe to do so in the circumstances, take a picture of the area where you fell if it's safe to do so on your cell phone or your smartphone or whatever it might be. Again, just kind of get a very, very concrete understanding of where exactly the fall took place and document it uh, in a secure place if at all possible. 
So in the event that you have suffered a fall accident and you do notice that you are injured, first and foremost, the most important thing is to seek out medical attention. If you get the sense that your injuries may be serious and require immediate medical attention, contact the ambulance service if it's safe to do so, EHS. If you get the sense that your injuries may not be immediately serious or require imminent medical attention, it's always best to check in with your GP, your general practitioner, or, or a walk-in clinic if you don't have an ordinary family doctor. If there are witnesses nearby that you notice after suffering a fall incident, to the extent that it's safe to do so and, and medically doable, get the information of anyone that you believe may have witnessed the fall, again, just to document exactly what it is that they might have observed take place. And again, you should really make sure first and foremost that it's safe to do so and that you're in a physical or mental state to be able to do, to do that before speaking and documenting the witness's information. So a question that we often receive is, do I need a lawyer after a slip and fall case? And the long story short is basically yes. In some personal injury claims, what's called liability, which means fault for the accident, can be relatively straightforward. But in the circumstances of a slip and fall or a trip and fall case, it's almost always not straightforward. The standard in Nova Scotia as to what kind of care an occupier needs to provide people coming onto their premises, the courts have held that it's one of reasonableness and not perfection. So a lot of different unique types of analysis go into what is reasonable in the circumstances. Again, it's not a standard of perfection in the event that you're looking to bring a claim forward for injuries that you suffered in a slip and fall. Oftentimes, insurance companies will dispute liability on slip and fall cases. It can be very complicated. It can be quite frustrating oftentimes, and it's always in your best bet to, at the very least, consult with an experienced personal injury lawyer if and when you are injured in a slip and fall accident to uh, determine what your rights are and, and what your options are in moving forward with the claim. Okay, everyone, we hope that that answers all of the questions that you might have had about what legal recourse you might have if you suffer injuries in a slip and fall or trip and fall accident. Make sure to leave any questions that you might have on slip and fall or trip and fall accidents down below and we'll make sure to answer them. Also, feel free to visit our website at valentlegal.ca or follow us on Instagram for more information about slip and fall and trip and fall cases and other types of personal injury claims. If you like today's video, please feel free to subscribe and we'll see you next time.